Following the examples of Ruth and the unnamed woman, we join together to declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with his power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Richard will now lead us in our prayers. Let us pray for the Church and the world and give thanks for God's goodness to us. As we reflect on the stories of Ruth and the woman at the well, we should pray for all those who may feel marginalised or set aside from parts of society. Just as Jesus reached out to the Samaritan woman and her people, traditionally ostracised by the Jews, so should the Christian Church reach out to and be open to all people, irrespective of colour, creed, race or sexuality. And so we pray for a church where all people matter. But as a church we are only as effective as its people, its leaders, ministers and members. So we pray that God will grant us the gifts of tolerance, compassion and understanding to create a place where all lives matter as we share the good news of the gospel message and God's love for all people. And at this time, we are asked to pray for all those who will be ordained priest or deacon in Leicester Cathedral this September, as they prepare to commit themselves to a life both in the service of God and the communities in which they will live. Especially we pray for Will Macaulay, wife of our former curate Noel, as she is ordained priest. Also praying for the communities in which all the newly ordained will serve and for the families of those who have made this choice. God our Father, Lord of all the world, who through your Son has called us into the fellowship of your universal church, hear our prayer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry each may be an instrument of your love and give to your servants, soon to be ordained, the needful gifts of grace, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us now pray for the world, a world that, for many, is troubled by illness, by lack of food and clean water, by shortage of medical facilities and medicines, and is devastated by conflict and war. While we may rightly be concerned about the effects of COVID-19 in this country, relative to many countries of the world, we are well catered for with our health and welfare services. So we must share our concern through prayer for the many people of those countries without adequate, adequate health care for those whose governments are unable or unwilling to act responsibly, and for those countries that have been hit by war and conflict, adding already to famine and lack of medical facilities. Lord, have mercy and compassion on all who suffer and are in need in these unprecedented times, whatever their religion, race or creed. We pray also for all those who are forced to flee their homeland and become refugees in a foreign land. We ask for compassion and understanding of the reasons why people try to reach our shores, a country with much to offer those who have so little. Heavenly Father, just as Ruth was accepted in an alien land, so we ask that we may be guided to accept those who seek shelter in our land and to protect them from discrimination or exploitation. And so we pray that we may all hold true to the Christian duty to care for the widow, the orphan and the stranger in our midst. Lord, 
In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now for our own community and our town. At this time we pray for those many students who have undergone difficult days following the A-level results debacle. For those who have lost out on their choice or chance of university, we pray for wisdom and understanding for the opportunities that may open up in the future. We pray also for all young people with their GCSE results, that they may receive the education of their choice. And we pray for head teachers, teachers and pupils as they prepare to return to full-time education in the coming weeks. After many months of restrictions on movement and on association with friends and family, we pray for those many people that have been affected by the pandemic, those who are lonely, those who feel neglected, those who are depressed or find isolation mentally challenging. We continue to give thanks for the work of medical staff, carers and social and voluntary services. And we give thanks for what the church has done within its community. But we should ask what more can we both do both within, outside and beyond the family of the church. Loving God, open our eyes to all who are in need and the opportunities to show the true meaning of Christianity in community. We pray also for the sick, for those awaiting hospital admission or recovering from illness, and we pray for the bereaved, both the recently bereaved and for those who are struggling to come to terms with their loss, especially where a normal funeral has not been possible. And in a few moments of quiet prayer, let us place into the loving, caring and healing hands of God any known to us personally who are in any kind of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, who through your Son healed the sick and comforted the distressed, uplifted the poor and gave hope to all people, bring that healing to all for whom we have prayed this day. Bring compassion to all who are in need, and bring hope, justice and peace to all peoples of the world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us conclude our prayers by joining together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs>